Hello, hello, good afternoon, morning, evening, whatever it is that you're experiencing, wherever you may be, but let it be good. Uh, so I've got a couple of hours here before the rain's supposed to hit us. Uh, figured I'd go ahead and try to get these brake pads changed out. Not that they have to be, but that I want them to be changed. Well, that way I'm not worried about them on a, at a different date later down the road. Because uh, they've are they got to be worn. I mean, I'm at 100,000 miles on the truck, so. Uh, preventive maintenance, PM. Uh, as opposed to the battery change out. That was a necessity. So, yeah. So, uh, let's see what we can do here with these... Uh, uh, brake pads don't know how it's gonna go it's almost a trial and error with this vehicle because I've never really worked on it before so uh, yeah uh, let's go with this and see what it does just got a notification I'm live which I know <laughs> I'm the one doing it anyway it's a little bit bright Put you guys up on a tripod here. Hey Susie, be cute. How you doing? Good to see you. But yeah, so let's see what we can do here. I'm just gonna kind of set y'all up as we go, I guess. Don't have any outright ideas or plans on how to set this up try to give you the best shot that I can at all times can't guarantee it because you never know I might be underneath the head so one of the first things I did was I set the parking brake so the vehicle doesn't move by the back wheels. Parking brake only works in the back wheels, not the front. be a sweaty day I can feel it already so I got my toolbox set up here got the brake pads of course my whatever I might need and uh, I gotta try to do something here guys mm -hmm. well, I guess I need to do it differently. Hold on guys, I'm trying something. I'm trying to fix something here. So hopefully I can go back and forth. So I'm trying to find it's probably inside. Trying to find a mill adapter to put on my drill. Try to make this a little bit faster to change these brakes. As you can see, it's starting to cloud already. That's quick, I just got out of here. Good. Ah, San Antonio. Yeah, 
one in here. before I started the live stream because I knew I was probably going to be wasting some time locating it. And of course, here we are. One more second. I guess I just have to hand wrench it all the way through and through from the beginning to the end. Hello. So back to the other drawing board. I think when there is a uh, locking nut on my wheels, one of my wheels right here, and all this makes up to it. So, yeah, that piece there goes with that piece there. So. It's 
hot. So I guess I could say everybody that was casting doubts on whether or not I knew anything about Charlotte's brakes whenever I uh, checked her car out. Well, uh, now you can see me change my own. Uh, you might learn something from it. Uh, a couple of years ago, I changed the brakes on my daughter's car for her. Uh, it took me about, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes, but I had air tools and the whole nine yards. But one of the things that I had done had uh, baffled the gentleman that allowed me to use his garage. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to read comments. Who is this? Brandon's recovery? I'm gonna try to read comments for so long. Uh, I'll I'll take my time with the process. I'm not gonna jump through it like I normally would. Good, okay, just chilling. That's good to hear, Susie. Have fun. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, happy happened on YouTube just as you came in, so thought I'd say hi before I go surfing. Well, Susie, enjoy your surfing. What's the temp there? I don't quite know. I think it's in right around 80. Get you a tripod for your phone. That's what I'm on, uh, Brennan. I've, I've got it on a tripod. Looks like he's going to be busy for a bit. Can't catch you later, freaking baby. Okay. Well, you be good. Be safe. Have fun. Later, bro. You're probably not going to read comments throughout the video. I'll try. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Brennan. Hi, Bree and all chatters. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm going to try to keep up with chat. I don't can't guarantee anything, but... Uh, let you guys watch what I'm doing from some perspective uh, I'm gonna try to keep up with the uh, they don't ha have like a gimbal so well, it wouldn't matter I guess it would if I had it on a tripod or something but uh, I'll try to show you guys as I'm working on it show you up close as I'm uh, everything that I'm doing uh, but it, I was doing the change out for my daughter in a gentleman's garage. He was uh, 70 plus. Uh, he had done a few of his own brake change outs in his time. Uh, I think he still works on a lot of his own vehicles. And uh, what I did that day uh, baffled him because he had never seen it done that way before, but yet he saw how much more simple it became doing what it is that you have to do in order to close the calipers or open them however you want to look at it uh, I guess open the calipers to their full extent uh, using a screwdriver and a pry bar without removing the caliper uh, from the vehicle so yeah huh. I'll get to that now that I got the tire off it's about where I'm at in my process now Let's see can you guys see okay yeah Okay, here's the caliper. I'll bring you guys closer as we work. Uh, but let me see what all I need. Truck's pretty stable, so it should be good. Order.
of course, I'm sweating my butt off because I sweat a lot. So what you just saw me do with the ranch. For real. <laughs> what you just saw me doing was there's two pistons, or a piston back in the back side here, and that's what pushes your brakes closer together to tighten up around your rotor. The uh, caliper always keeps it at a particular tension. I was reaching in here to pry, because I'm pulling the face of the caliper out with the piston still shoved behind the rotor, using the rotor as leverage to close the caliper up. Or open it better. Now, and still, my brake pads look incredible. There's some back ones that are running out, wearing out. Because that brake pad looks fantastic still. You can't see this side. I wonder if the back ones are wearing faster than the front ones. Because I know I'm, I know I've used. I know my brakes are used, I just don't know where at this point. The reason why I say that is because my uh, fluid level is low uh, and the brake fluid uh, caves up in the dash up, in the, uh, up under the hood. It's come down low, I don't want to refill it because when I replace the brakes it will push the excess fluid out. So I figured I'd come out here and replace brakes, knowing, thinking that normally the front is what wears faster due to the weight of the engine being in the front end of the vehicle. But this brake does not look bad at all. So now, I guess I'll take it off and show you show you guys what I mean.
brake pad's got a couple of cracks in it, which is not that big of an issue due to the fact that the pad is still. Let me get the. Let me get a brand new one. So here's one identical to it. And you can see there's not that much worn out. Normally when a pad is bad, it's closer to down here, which it's still halfway away from that at a minimum. Uh, but you can see this pad is not worn down. Now, I know that some of you guys heard me talk about uh, when I was talking to Charlotte that her rotors were bad in the back wheels. Well, this is your rotor. Okay, this is the rotor. And you see how it's pretty much just as flat as you can possibly imagine? Hers had gouges in it. Gouges all the way around, everywhere all up and down the whole rotor where the brake pad sits and presses against to slow the vehicle down with this it was all gouged and that's dangerous and uh, that's what she had on her vehicle uh, somebody reported to me that she got her brakes replaced very glad she did she needed them in a bad way Apparently these are my noise pieces. Huh, that's crazy. I've never seen that before. I have to put this back in the way it was. And we should be it. So now I'm curious as to whether or not I should check the back ones. I don't think the front pads and the back pads are the same. I could be wrong. I've never owned this new of a vehicle. I've always worked on my own, took care of the problems as they arose. Uh, trying to be a little bit preventive here and uh, doing it in advance. It's a nice vehicle. There's no reason to let it go bad before I replace something. Uh, the battery, that's another issue because it's the battery. Uh, so now I'm thinking I'm probably going to put this all back together and maybe check the back, back at least this side on the back because I expected this to be at least an hour or so and and that's because I'm talking and trying to look at chat, I think. Usually back pads are smaller. Uh, yes, that is true. Frankie Bobby, hey, hey, what's up, free bird? Wasu Libre, Wasu Libre. Been a while, new brake pads. I was, well, I was planning on it. Where's the caliper? The caliper is this piece here. Uh, it's heavy. You don't want to let it hang off of uh, those are it is a two piston caliper as you can see there uh, This being one piston and that one being another uh, So it is a two piston caliper. I kind of assumed it was and it's a caliper with a P not a B uh, Just FY uh, They're heavy so you don't want to leave them hanging on your hose whenever you remove them You want to keep them supported up where there's no stretch no stress on that hose because that could create problems later down the road as the vehicle gets older, of course, but at any point, actually, because these fittings can break. Uh, these are pretty different type of fittings that are meant not to break, uh, but it does happen, so. But uh, yeah, so that's the, uh, the two brake pads, and as you can see, they're both still pretty full, uh, not quite as full as brand new. Knowing that, I mean, that is actually pretty thick. Uh, that's probably half inch. Yeah, uh, half inch, five sixteenths maybe. 
uh, somewhere within that range in thickness. I still have more than a quarter uh, left on my pads existing. You can see how thick that is right there. And you can see how thick the inside one is as well. You see these are what compressed together to stop the vehicle using the caliper. So I'm going to go ahead and put this caliper back on, fight it, because I know it's good. I'm going to fight it. And uh, maybe we'll move it along to the back side and check it out. Not much of a fight, thankfully. I think this vehicle has become my favorite vehicle to work on because I hardly ever work on it. That was a joke. I think calipers are supposed to be torqued to about 25 or 40 pounds, somewhere around there, I think. I'm not sure. It might be 125 for all I know, but I think it's like 25 to 40 pounds. I normally do it hand tight and then uh, bang it on there to uh, make sure that it's nice and snug. I've never had one back out. I have had problems taking them out, uh, but then again, they were the long pistons that came all the way across, and that's what the caliper slid on. This is the type that it had that now has a rod inside that it slides on, on the uh, brake harness here. So yeah, uh, but uh, it's this right now uh, because there's no pressure against it from the hydraulic or the brake foot. As soon as I get in the truck and push the brake, uh, that will tighten up almost immediately, maybe a couple of pumps. So we'll get this tire on, and I guess I'll move to the back half and see if uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. That way I can check it, and I know with my own two eyes that it's fine or it needs to replace. So this truck has the single style A arm, one rod. Uh, lower a arm is a little bit thicker as you can see it's got a stabilizer shock absorber where you're over uh, there's another name for them I can't think of it right now but they're a pain in the butt to replace if you have to uh, I don't think I ever got one replaced when I tried in all honesty and I'm uh, I'm adamant about doing things but yeah it's starting to cloud up now the sun was out uh, Still got some blue sky. It's a pretty day. There's my trailer at a Ronde. There's my truck from this vantage point. Uh, but yeah, it's starting to cloud up a little bit. Sun's right up there. Blue sky, cloud, blah, blah, blah. Uh, hopefully the rain doesn't move in faster than I can. Check the other side. So let's keep going.
my finger. I think I told you guys that it, uh, I don't know who all knows what Morton Thicol is, uh, but there was a time in life whenever I got hired there, uh, what Morton Thicol did during that time was they made propellant for the shuttle rocket boosters. Military grade missiles and ICBMs and the whole nine yards. The propellant ported into the missile casings, uh, rocket casings, and uh, things like that. So I uh, put in an application. My oh, here. Put in my application. I uh, got a phone call uh, for an interview. Went in, and of course, I got the, you know, I got the job. So the morning I go in for the uh, start orientation. Uh, it just so happened I have a blowout on the vehicle that I'm driving, which belonged to a friend of mine. And, uh, you know, he had a spare and everything, so he had everything in the vehicle necessary in order for me to change it, so I did as quickly as I could, knowing I was going to be late for uh, my first day of orientation. And uh, I think I broke my own record and changed the tire in like six minutes. And uh, jacking it up, get it off, putting the new one on, the whole nine yards. Six minutes, six, seven minutes, something like that. And I get there and I had five minutes to spare, so I go inside and everybody's like, you know, why weren't you here earlier? You know, they came out and told us something about 10 minutes ago. I'm like, well, tell me what it is. That way I know. It was nothing, it was just something stupid. But anyway, uh, I told them why I was late and they said, there's no way. And I went and showed them the tire and it was blowing out. And uh, it was still hot from uh, from taking it off that quick few seconds that it took to get everything changed out. Uh, the tire rim was still hot, the tire was still hot, so yeah, proved to them that I had just done it.
So back here I got a picnic table. Oh yeah, I wouldn't forget that free bird. Hey Jenny. They stick. I finally made it to 1,000 on your uh, YouTube channel, Brendan. Yeah, friends look good for now. Very good. Just yesterday, awesome, Brendan. It's good to hear. Loving the close-up explanation. Thank you. Um, yeah, auto mechanics gets me. Could still do some pin lubing and put the pads back on. Wouldn't hurt. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about the pin lubing. I've almost never done that. Well, these are, like I said, these are different. Uh, these are just full, straight-up caliper. Uh, pin is in mobile nowadays, at least on mine, from what I can see. Moving on, hello. Keep doing these types of videos. People need these videos. I love mechanics. Well, I don't, I don't mind it. I've always done it, like I said, for myself. So I'm all for manual basic transmission. Uh, me too. I don't like the... Uh, here in this area, due to traffic, it's kind of a different thing. But anyway, nicely done, dude. Good for you. Calipers, do they stick? Uh, yes, they do. Uh, 3,442 watch hours. You're getting there, Brandon. I'm going to go check you out here in a little bit. Uh, probably when we get done here. Give you another watch hour or two, maybe. Check, you, check your site out. I have not been there, and my apologies. I've seen you in mine several times now, and uh, I did not realize that it's Brandon's Recovery TV. So, I'll, uh, I'll make it a point to go check you out. I'm assuming you're on YouTube, right? Clarify if you're not, uh, but it looks like you are, and it's good to hear that you've bumped the 1,000 mark, and now you need the 4,000 mark on your videos. Watch ours. All right, bro, I appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. Yep, I am. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so he needs to get up to 4,000 watch hours, guys, in order to start doing things with his channel a little bit more freely. Uh, thank you, Freebird. Uh, so yeah, anybody that wants to go check it out, uh, I'm giving Brandon's Recovery TV a shout out here. Uh, go check him out, get him some watch hours in, and, uh, let him get over that 4,000 mark. He's at 30, I think you said 34, right? 3,400 hours, something like that. Yeah, so good, get 3,442, there you go. So go there and give them some time. So, here's the back of my truck. And you'll probably be better off down here. I don't really care that y'all see my tag. doesn't matter to me. Uh, but I'm trying to get you to the best vantage point to see what it is that I'm doing. Maybe here. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. It's probably going to be in my way, but I'll get over that. And as long as that tire stays down, I'll go ahead and put a wedge up on my front tires to prevent a rollback. Uh, I always want to be careful. It's better to be safe than sorry, as I've always been told. These little bottle jacks are so wobbly. They scare me to death, but I know that they're extremely safe because I've always used them, especially on my new vehicles. Because on my new vehicles, this is what they have. So yeah. Back in the day, I don't think they were so necessarily good I see back in the day 
I mean, when I was younger. This battle deck's been around for a while. That sucks. I think I kind of wedged it in there for strength. Good job, good way just the front tires. See, so these things come with the jack for the vehicle, and uh, as you'll see, we set it right there behind the tire so it doesn't roll backwards because I'm back there working. And because I can always roll forward because they're tires. I'm gonna put one under the front tires well, or the front of the tires well. So I got one on the back and one on the front to help support what I'm doing. Let me have a seat and read a couple of chats here guys. Uh If you don't have a thousand subs, you can still stream with Prism. Yes, you can. Uh, I did. I streamed with Prism. Oh. I know I streamed with Prism over a thousand subs. Uh, because they still weren't releasing my phone to live stream because of the watch hours. So, yes, you can. Uh, it's how all the other... That is correct. Cancel, no, I'm not looking to stop. Yeah, check it out, Brandon. It's uh, another app, uh, Prism. Prism Live, I think is the app name. I think you, yes, I did use it, Max. Yes, I did. I love older cars I can actually fix. I hate the crappy plastic electronic cars we have today. Yeah, I know. Uh, you have 4,000 watch hours, Frankie? <laughs> I have like 10 or 12,000. Uh, yeah, I hit 4,000 after I hit them so fast that they that they still held my phone captive and wouldn't let me live stream. I hit 4,000 hours like the week after I started the channel. And uh, because it had happened so quickly in a week, uh, they held my channel back for another week. I was still able to do webcam off my laptop, but not live stream off my phone. Yes. Uh, yeah, I had them real quick. Uh, you guys came and supported me quickly whenever uh, we were talking about that. Or when you guys were asking me to start uh, my own live stream. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, everything happened really quickly for me. Uh, very appreciative and thankful for it. And now all I can do is try to continue to give you guys streams of whatever at this point. Uh, I was going to run down. I'm sure you guys heard or saw yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. I had streamed or the night before. Friday night. Yeah, so today's Sunday. Friday night when I streamed, I had planned on going to Ohio today. Uh, but because they did not make it there in time, you guys were saying how things had been canceled, blah, blah, blah. Well, that was true, and the reason why it was canceled was because they weren't going to be there early enough to be able to have a rally in the afternoon, I think, because I don't think they've made it there yet, right? They're still on the road, to the best of my knowledge. I haven't checked them in a minute, but uh, nevertheless, uh, yeah, I, that's why I didn't run down there, because I was going to have to leave there by 2 to get back here by 8 to be ready for work tomorrow morning. So, uh, yeah, the, I was on a time crunch, and it wasn't going to fit my time crunch. Uh, so, uh, we'll see what happens between now and the end, the end of next week, or the end of this week, 
because today is Sunday, the beginning of the week. So yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm sure I'll be live streaming somewhere with them this weekend, this coming weekend. So we'll have to uh, just wait and see how that pans out. So let's get back to getting this tire off before this weather changes on me and uh, checking these brake pads in the back. I guess that's a good view, right, guys? That's another good reason to have your tires rotated on the norm. Keeps your lugs working <laughs> loose so that you're not fighting them. to hear me speaking uh, so give you an even more close-up view so that you're closer to me and you can hear me speaking as I take these lugs off Actually, I had an uncle. Oh, it was back in the 70s. Uh, who owned a uh, tire shop record service. Another one of his ventures that he ventured off on. And of course, he didn't make it like any of the others. But it was his deal. So I helped in the shop there uh, pretty much every weekend. Make a few extra bucks when I was a kid. I'm looking down. I'm trying to keep it right right. Looking down in here, there's the brake pad, and I there's the brake pad metal, and I can see the pad and it's still quite full. Uh, maybe a little bit more worn than the front, maybe. Uh, I can't see the inside of the other one. I'm going to have to... I think I need to pull the caliper. I believe it was you, Max, that was saying that the back pads would be smaller than the front. You are absolutely correct. Uh, these are basically straight up and down. The other ones were curved as they curved around the rotor. This rotor is still in pretty good shape. Uh, it doesn't have any pitting, any gouging. It's pretty much smooth, as you can see here. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, the rotors 
Rotors will only go bad or mostly go bad because you let your brake pads wear down too far and it winds up gouging uh, again the way that uh, Charlotte's were on her, on the rear of her car. Uh, which to me showed that the back end of her vehicle probably braked uh, harder than the front end of her vehicle. Uh, probably because it's a smaller vehicle. As you can see, my brake pads are much smaller on the back than they are in the front, meaning that the weight of the vehicle is in the front. And I would be willing to venture that this caliper, this piece here, is a one piston caliper, not a two piston caliper like I had in the front. Again, oversizing the front or sizing the front adequately carries more weight to the rear as the rear of the vehicle, we all know, is much lighter than the front, as those that have engines in the front anyway. But I need to see this other one before I put it back together. Okay, I think I found a spot that I can see it. I need to get a flashlight. Give me a sec. Yeah, still plenty of pad on that one as well. I assumed as much seeing the front one. But you know what they say about assuming, right? So, uh, I'll show you my brake reservoir of the fluid uh, that it's low. I'm not going to open it, but I can show you the levels from the exterior because it's a plastic, white plastic with a dark fluid on the inside. Or darker fluid but you can still see the lines and that was the reason behind me uh, thinking I needed to change brakes other than the fact that I heard a squeal that was a long time ago though uh, when I checked them then which was probably probably about a year maybe a year and a half ago probably about a year and a half ago so necessarily I haven't put that much more mileage on my truck, but uh, I just felt it necessary to go ahead and check because I'm doing a lot of driving now as opposed to what I had been doing, uh, which was almost nothing. But now I'm comfortable in saying I do not need brake pads yet. As opposed to thinking I did. I, I thought I did. I know how I drive. I know how long brake pads usually last. But uh, I'm not the I'm not the most I use my brakes a lot. We'll just put it that way. People drive people drive too slow for me.
And of course, just some other crap that we buy all the time. Don't even think about it. Made in China. I bought this a long time ago. I say a long time ago. This is, this is the third truck it's been in. And I never took the tag off of it. Plastic lug wrench. Plastic. I've had it all this time. I don't know, six years, eight years? Did any of y'all see my earlier post? When I wrote Bean County. Maybe one of you guys can answer me the question. Why do we clean beans before we soak them? Anybody know? I have uh, an idea. I'm assuming I was probably told as a kid. That's why it's in my mind. I'm trying to get out of the sun, guys. Sun rays. Now we can go right here. Where am I from? The United States. Born and raised in the United States of America. Thank you, free bird. Food of you. Good of you, okay. <laughs> I'm home. Gas is eight bucks a gallon. I know, free bird, it's unreal. My car has shoes in the rear, please explain. Okay, so shoes, they have a round drum that encapsulates the shoes and the shoes press to the outside to catch the drum. Uh, that would be shoes. Shoes are half moon shape and they go all the way around like this on the inside of your drum and when the brake, there's two pistons, uh, one pushing each half of the shoe. There's a pivot point on the bottom, there's a spring on top to hold them together. And when you depress the brake pedal, it does like this to your shoe. And your shoe opens up into your drum to slow it down. As opposed to the caliper type, now the brake pads are pressed together on that inch and a half, two inch surface. They press together to hold that metal. That's your two different types. My car has shoes in the rear, please explain. I hope that helps. Might as well put new ones on. Or you'll be having to take it back off again. Yeah, I don't have them with me, uh, Brandon. Uh, I would have replaced the rears uh, just because I know that they're more worn than the front. Uh, but they're still fine. Uh, very fine. Very fine. So I'm not concerned about them. Uh, maybe when I do go purchase, I'll purchase, all, uh, purchase the other two for the rear, uh, which are the smaller pad. And uh, maybe that weekend I'll do all four at one, at one time. What about a brake flush? Uh, basically, they take and they put fresh brake fluid. They'll siphon out what you have in your system right now out of the reservoir. I'll show you the reservoir in a minute. And then they'll uh, put in fresh fluid. Then they'll open up all of your uh, bleeder valves. Uh, that is what the, uh, they're on the end of the bleeder lines and they'll bleed out. And uh, they'll remove the old fluid and put in brand new fluid. Uh, that would be a brake flush. Uh, 2012 Escape. Uh, sorry, sorry for you, Jeannie. Yeah, brake flush would be good to do. Uh, Ford Escape or Lex, Lexus Edition, two may not matter, may both be four wheel drive. Uh, yeah, four wheel drives usually have a difference in the brakes. Most have disc and pads in the rear now. Yes, uh, most do. I have a small set of shoes for his parking brake in addition to disc and pad. Yeah, and that would be on the inside of the rotor. 
for the, like you said, the small shoes for the, uh, I don't know exactly what type of, uh, I would assume it's going to be the small shoe on the inside, like you're saying. Uh, they've gotten a lot better through the years because back in the older, olden days or older days, uh, 2000, early 2000, 2006, 7 probably, uh, the uh, half man shoes uh, that, would you, that you would use for your emergency brake, uh, they wore out too quickly or did not stick well enough and uh, your vehicle would move on your emergency brake and it's not supposed to. Let's have just some pads. Okay, hey, eBay, Ebri. Pads in front, shoes and rotors in back. Uh, yeah. Well, it's not shoes and rotors, it's shoes and drums. Uh, you have rotors on the front with the pads. FY. Uh, All is well, LOL. It's a great car, well serviced. Well, good. I'm glad that you're able to keep up with it and that it's doing you good because uh, I'm not too. I don't like those so much. Eight gallons in NB. I'm afraid to check Ottawa. Probably same or close. Well, isn't NB in New Brunswick normally more expensive than other places? Uh, that's kind of the way I understood it, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not from Canada. Never been there. Can't go there. So I'll probably never know the answer to that unless one of you guys shares it with me, of course. But uh, yeah, so that pretty much an hour took an hour and I did I guess that would have been a PM right preventive maintenance making sure that everything's working well uh, no PM would be to do something to it to make sure that it does not break uh, maintenance is whenever you have to repair because it's broken yeah so I guess different ways to look at it my glasses are all slimy from sweat you know, probably can't see it but I can but yeah, so I had, uh, anybody come up with the answer on why we clean beans before we cook them? MB is New Brunswick, Brandon. Were you cracking a joke at my floor? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I had to think about it for a minute, Brandon, before I realized it was New Brunswick. But yeah, I know that it's New Brunswick. Canadian prices, yes, very expensive. You guys are... Uh, Mr. Trudeau over there is definitely taking you guys to the cleaners right now. Well, we're getting taken to the cleaners too. I mean, shoot. Paying 429 419 whatever a gallon is just insane, ridiculous, and there's no sense in it. Where's all that money going? Did y'all see that Rand Paul had shot down the uh, $30 billion uh, Ukraine support bill? Whatever the heck they called it, they have some BS name to it. I remember changing a flywheel on a Sa Sabdard Ford. What the heck is a Sabdard Ford? I think you misspelled it. Yeah, changing flywheels is always fun. Usually only do then. Hey, Cindy Lou. Uh, usually. It's because you're replacing a clutch or something. Rock on, Rampo. Yeah, no kidding, right? Uh, I wrote on uh, Safe Chat that he was an effing hero. I know enough to call my mechanic buddy, and when I get myself, <laughs> love to know planes. Cool. Stopped in to say hi. Hey, Sandy B. And clean beans to get rid of the rocks. Hello. Uh, I think personally, uh, no, because I know whenever I was taught to clean beans, we removed all the half beans, we removed all the broken beans, we removed all the burnt looking or shriveled up looking beans. It wasn't just a matter of taking the rocks and or whatever else might be in the bean bag uh, when you dropped them to clean them. Uh, but I was always, I was under the impression that the reason why we clean beans, half beans, broke beans, stuff like that, was to prevent the water from getting soggy before cooking. Uh, or the interior of the bean can absorb some of the nastiness as opposed to a hard shell bean can absorb 
in the nastiness that might be in a bag or something like that. Thank you, Freebird. Uh, but that's what I thought I understood. Yeah, you're right. Keep all the pretty whole beans. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's... And I think it's that way whenever they're also uh, soaking before cooking. Uh, the hard beans, of course, would have to soak a lot longer than the salt or the broken beans. And the broken beans would absorb too much water, I'm guessing, which would create a soupy or a thick mixture as opposed to a watered down type mixture. I know planes better than cars. He is having fun correcting my lack of knowledge of cars. No, I'm not making fun of you, Gene. I'm laughing at your escape, just so you know. <laughs> As you can see, I'm a GMC guy. I'm a Chevy. I'm, well, I've had Chevys. I've had one Ford in my life. Uh, I also had an International, and I loved that truck. It was a 73 International four-wheel drive. I had it up in Utah, and that was a tank, boy. And, uh, of course, I've always been called Frank the Tank because of my name. You stay helping in the kitchen, cleaning beans. Oh, what fun, right? I know I cleaned a lot of beans when I was a kid. Gas goes way up. I guess people might be making moonshine ethanol and add, and add to the gas. I could be wrong though. Uh, if gas goes way up, I mean, how much higher does it need to go there, Julian? <laughs> Just saying. I have a Chevy, a Dodge, and a Ford. Well, y'all all kinds of mixed up over there in that family. I'm just kidding, Jeannie. Don't take that. Don't take that to heart. It's just a joke. I'm just not a Ford Dodge fanatic. So, uh, matter of fact, I drove a Ford the other day, and I was not none too pleased with the way it handled. Uh, rode like a box car. Steering wheel just felt weird. Uh, the steering of it, not the wheel itself, but the steering. And uh, yeah, just not my cup of tea. I don't, I don't understand. But you know, to each their own. Whatever you're grown, whatever you're raised on, normally is what you wind up following. Uh, though my children have always been on uh, GMC and and uh, Chevrolet. Uh, two of my kids now own Subaru. One owns, I think, two others own Hyundai. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, something like that. But they grew up on Chevys and GMCs. So, like I said, it's to each their own, and I don't mind the Subaru. Uh, my two boys uh, just bought themselves Subarus, well, they're girls. Uh, my oldest son bought two new Subarus, one for him and one for his uh, fiance. And my younger son bought a Subaru for his fiance. So yeah, so now they're all sporting Subarus, the three of them, uh, three vehicles. And uh, my son runs a Ford for work. He was given a Toyota from work, and uh, I've always been a GMC Chevrolet kind of guy, so yeah, it's just the way it is. I got nothing against every other place or every other group, I just don't own them, and there's probably a reason behind that, in my opinion. Always my opinion, guys. I realized what actually happened when we, when we not changed the flywheel, we just had to remove it from the transmission part. Okay, uh, torque converter probably. The torque converter connects to the flywheel. It may have spun, broke, uh, cracked the flywheel, something like that. So therefore, the flywheel had to be replaced. Hope gas doesn't go up any more than it is. Man, it's insane right now, Brandon. Gas prices are, are driving me crazy. I'm so glad that I don't have to pay for uh, gas for work, uh, especially when I drive an hour to and from, an hour over there, an hour back. picked up because if my body cools off it will be harder for me to move around later why do I know these things because I'm getting old the job is 10 minutes away nice for you talk about a save on gas yeah, and I drive an hour to and from
Yeah, so the... Uh, I brought those, bought those brake pads, like I said, probably a year ago, uh, thinking that I needed them because I heard my brake squeal one day, or so I thought. Actually, they squealed more than once. It was about a year ago. And then when I checked them, uh, they were fine. So... I didn't concern myself with checking them again, and here we are a year and a half later. Granted, the truck barely moved for nine months, as I was unemployed. But I noticed the fluid. Oh yeah, I was going to show you guys that, right? The fluid reservoir. So you can see here's the reservoir. You can see the darkness of the fluid, the emptiness of the container. Here is your minimum line, which is this rib, and I'm right above it. And here's your full line, maximum right there. So I'm down some fluid here, and uh, that tells me that my brakes are being used. And as long as I don't have fluid around my vehicle, uh, around my wheels, I'm not, it's not losing the fluid. It's using it as the brake pads continue to compress. It takes more fluid in the line to compress them. My best car was a Concorde 1969. So no rally. Uh, they might have one the night when they arrived, but uh, it was going to be too late for me to be uh, there for a rally. So that's where I did, that's why I didn't go. Uh, because I'd had to leave there by 2 to be ready for work tomorrow morning. And if they didn't arrive there by 2, which is right around now, or an hour, let's see, what time are we? Yeah, which is right around now, uh, I would have to be leaving, headed back AMC Concord, 68 or 69, easy to fix. Yeah, the Concords were pretty cool. Yeah, so I didn't, uh, I didn't feel necessary, I didn't feel it was to my advantage to go down there for something like that. Oh, and so that you guys know, I uh, have not, have not been able to locate my tooth. So, I'm pretty much going with it. I think I lost it. I'm so sad. It's a $400 piece. And now I'm gonna have to get another, another one made. I'll be going to the same dentist that made my first one. That was my second one. So I've had two in 15 years. 15? Yeah, I think I got it back in 2007. So I have two in 15 years. My tooth, my flipper, as they're called, the 67 Chevy Impala. Would love to have a 66 Chevy Impala. Yeah, my, my flipper, my uh, gap filler. I had lost it for a year, a couple of years ago, and when I found it, I was so elated that I had found it after going without it for a year, and at that point, I wasn't in the position to find a dentist to make me another one. Yeah, yeah, like I said, it's a $400 piece, but whatever, I'll, I'll I have to go in, they'll have to do a mold of my teeth and uh, fix it so make me another one and they call it a flipper i guess because it just flips in and out of the mouth as you need it you know you have to reach in there with a finger but still uh, can't eat with it uh was gonna have it bridged they told me i couldn't bridge it because my teeth were too close together at the front my dad had an impala but i wasn't driving in yeah i've uh i had a 69 impala two-door hardtop had a 327 with two-speed power glide in it. Uh, thing ran like a bat out of hell, boy. I mean, it was an awesome ride. Big old long boat. Love that car. These kids broke all the windows in it after I blew the motor in it. I blew the motor in that one. Uh, about 20 miles from where I was headed. I uh, walked 20 miles. We drove back out. 
hooked the car up, towed it back to his place. Uh, that was in uh, down in Aransas, Ingleside. It broke down in Rockport. So yeah, I overhauled that motor, that 327, put in uh, 11 and a half to one pop-ups, pop-up pistons. Uh, had a spider intake and uh, was wanting to do a roller rocker on it, but uh, never got to that that point. Somebody bought it, three three grand, put it in his car, and uh, he didn't like it because it was too powerful and took it back out. It was pushing about 465 horses at 327, and uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun with that thing though. Yeah, so like I said, you know, I've been turning wrenches for a while. Y'all just don't know that because I've never really said any of that before. Uh, I know I told you I changed my first starter at the age of seven, uh, overhauled my first motor at the age of nine, or watched, helped overhaul a motor at the age of nine. Uh, my cousin and I, we overhauled his motor by ourselves, he and I, uh, at the age of 11. So yeah, I've been around wrenches for a minute. And I kind of do know what I'm talking about. Nowadays, the vehicles are so hard to work on anymore because of all the junk they put in them. Uh, for emissions and whatnot, it's just a bunch of crap that's added to the vehicles nowadays. Stuff that wasn't, in my opinion, isn't necessary. But then again, some people say it is. I mean, whatever. Uh, I'm not for it. I'm not against it. It just costs more money to fix things. That's, and to me, that's the name of the game. The more they can charge you, the better off they are. I had the Concord, the Licky Me. An 87 Ford Mustang hatchback. <laughs> That's a funny one, yes. I've known a few hatchbacks. But that thing was a German tank. I loved it. I can imagine. I junked the 2001 Escape rather than changing the alternator and six spark plug. What a mess. Yeah, <laughs> That's funny. The six spark, spark plug. I've heard that before. Man was waiting for me when I learned to drive. Dad got a Ford and I got the Chevy. Cool. I junked an old... Cutlass, the engine seized. I had a Cutlass at one point. It had a uh, 350 rocket motor in it. Man, that thing ran on like a bat out of hell too. You gotta take it easy today and take the day off. Recharging is always a good thing. Uh, if you call that taking it easy, taking the day off and recharging, yes, that's exactly what I'm doing, Sandy. The dentist was going to charge me for a flipper, two front teeth, 350. I said, forget it, I will wait for my bottom partial. So Monday, done after about three weeks. Yeah, I know it sucks, Julian, that we have to go through this, but you know, hey, we get older and that's what happens. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna do a flipper. Uh, I'll do another one. And as you can see, it's just the one tooth. Though I do have the two missing here, top and bottom. Uh, that broken one that I just lost used to attach from here to here. And uh, he had the wire all the way out front here, and I told him, oh, I don't want the wire. I want the wire in the back so it's not seen. Uh, that, hence, the, I was telling him I wanted a pretty smile when I was done. So he sent it back and had it remade, and they put the wire all the way back here, and then it broke. So it didn't last that long. Uh, but that piece still continued to work. It wouldn't fall out. It didn't move. It sat there just perfectly fine. So that's what I've been using for the past two years, because I had that for two and a half yeah, I had it for about two and a half years. And like I said, I lost it for a year, so yeah. So I guess I had it longer than that. I don't know. But nevertheless, here we are. Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. I killed that engine. <laughs> I blew mine. I blew the, uh, I blew that 350 rocket. Uh, drunk. Brush your teeth. <laughs> uh, yeah, I blew the motor in my Cutlass. Uh, that 350 rocket. I winded up putting a uh, 400 in it, and uh, that one was faster than the 350. Uh, my cousin had a 400 in a Tonyac Le Mans. I took it out of the Le Mans, rewelded the uh, motor mounts in the Cutlass, and uh, set the Pontiac motor in the Cutlass. Uh, yeah, 73 Cutlass loved the car. Yeah, mine was a 76. 76 four-door service truck is in my driveway with company gas but the other thirsty burger should be 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 hurt smart but when I have to I know right man that's insane mine seized in the woods 
Some gutless. Yeah, I caught that. They'll teach their own. Mine was not gutless. Mine was very torquey. It, uh, it had a uh, shift kit in the transmission. That's how I blew the uh, motor because I wanted to see if the shift kit would catch because normally they don't. And uh, that one did. I think I talked about this the other day, not too long ago. Avatar Corolla in 2020. My uh, uncle had a Toyota Corolla in the 70s, uh, late 70s. I think it was a 78, maybe a 79. The thing ran like a champ forever. It was it was an awesome little ride. Fun tries to correct my spelling, go figure. I know, right? Yeah, spell check sometimes sucks. Actually, the thing had power. Uh, yeah, they know they. Some of them do, some of them don't. Uh, I know I drove my uncle's when I was first learning how to drive, as a matter of fact. Because that would have been 79, 80. So at 80, I was 15. Yeah, I drove that car, though. My sister had a Dodge Challenger in her college years in Florida and drove on the beach. Guess what happened? Yeah, it's a rust bucket sitting in the middle of nowhere just falling to pieces, right? Either that or got it stuck in the water and then it got inundated. Got it stuck on the beach and then inundated in water. Nevertheless, it's still a rust bucket at this point. But uh, yeah, so. Well guys, it's been an hour and a half. It's 2.30, well it's still kind of early. Thought about going for a ride, but I don't really need to go for a ride anywhere. Yeah, rust, that's exactly what I said. Uh, I expect this to take a little bit, at least what I was trying to read, uh, chat with you guys. If you have an auto mechanics chat, your channel would be even more rocking. Really? The only thing is, I got a brand new vehicle and it hardly ever needs to be worked on. It would be kind of hard to have a mechanic shop. I didn't see it, or I wasn't paying attention. It would. I love learning auto mechanics. Uh, there's a lot that I would have to learn to be an auto mechanic today uh, with all the new changes that they have. I mean, it's still turning wrenches and I know how to do it. I don't think I like doing it as much now as I did back whenever I was older, or younger, rather. Uh, we're still going to do the spark plugs. I just don't want to get started and then have the weather come in on me. Although the weather looks perfectly fine, and it was supposed to come in around 2.30. Auto talk show is awesome. Yes, it is. It's uh, I, I watch those videos whenever I need to learn how to do something. I had this crazy video, it's insane to watch it. Uh, I had a 2007, I think it was 2007, it was before the 2015, the blue truck that you guys saw in that thumbnail the other day. It was before that one, it was a brown one. It was box like that one, you know, still pretty much the same shape. I think it was an 07. And uh, I had the headlight go out a headlight go out and I don't like to walk, drive around with no lights or with lights not working all my lights need to be working on my vehicle at all times that's just what I like and uh, so I go to a YouTube video to figure out because my buddy tells me that I'm gonna have to drop the whole front clip meaning the whole front end grill the whole nine yards in order to change the headlights and I was like well that's insane you shouldn't have to do that in order to change headlights headlights should be an easy change out so I go and I get on YouTube and sure enough, that's exactly what it tells me. You have to drop the whole clip, tells you what bolts to look for, where to go, what to do, all this stuff. And I'm like, that's just totally insane. There's no way you have to go through all that in order to change your headlights. So I climb underneath the hood of my vehicle and uh, get to looking. I'll show you guys just to in case anybody else ever runs into this situation, you'll kind of have an idea uh, that maybe you don't have to do what the YouTube video is telling you. It was actually so much simpler 
to do what I did or what I had to do so it tells you it's telling you you have to drop the whole front clip which is your headlight your grill maybe your uh, fill in probably have to remove a lot of this plastic remove it in order to get behind the headlight well so I climbed under the hood and of course you always have one side that is clear and in the old days the battery either sat here which there is a as you can see a battery compartment right here uh, my battery now sits in the back you guys saw me change it the other day now you have the air breather well you also used to have a battery here because the air breather just sat on top of the motor here on top of the carburetor but now they have the air breather over there where you change your filter so you can remove that box and have access to the back of your panel well this vehicle here clearly shows this this piece right here is a dust cap covering the back side of the bulb so if you put it back over the top boom there it is and so you can remove that dust cap that piece right there you can remove this dust cap access your light bulb replace your light bulb well you can do the same thing over there the only difference is mine's kind of pulled away here they have this uh, I don't I don't even know how to explain it but it's like a covering to cover the face of the light right here or the back side of the light well if you pop a couple of these snaps out you can remove this piece after removing the breather box you can remove this piece and there's another dust cap back there so something that would have taken three to four hours to remove this whole front end I removed that one breather box pop that little plastic piece out a little cover cover piece and I replaced the light bulb put the breather box back in and I was done and I did it in 20 30 minutes so yeah sometimes videos on YouTube aren't uh, what you think they are uh, because uh, I watched I think I looked at three different videos and all three of them told me I had to remove the front clip of my vehicle in order to replace it. Uh, in order to replace the light bulbs. And I did not. The headlights. So, yeah. Mm, Auto effect show is awesome. I got my new favorite vehicle. I researched. I bought it. But still didn't read the manual. What's that? But I love my new car. I spent way too much on it. What would you get? 35,000 for a 24,000 car. Three bird. In your car, 10 year car loan plans now. Wow. So, what'd you get, Free Bird? I don't see in here what you're talking about. What'd you get, Wasu Lieber? Are you going to tell us? Are you just going to leave us hanging with you bought a new car and paid too much for it and not tell us what it is because I'm even going back through chat looking and I don't see I know you're not talking about well that was about the gutless uh, is it true on the newer cars the battery is under the back seat I've heard something about that, Jenny. I do not know. It's a Hyundai 2022 Santa Fe Export Edition. I mean, Sport Edition. Uh, uh, those are kind of cool. The Hyundais, uh, 20, uh, the Santa Fe. Yeah, those are the little. Uh, they're a little box car or box SUV, if you ask me. But yeah, those are kind of cool. I like the way they look. I wouldn't own one, but you know, hey, like I said, to each their own. More power to you, and I hope that it serves you well. Yeah, I assumed you said sport, or meant sport. Uh, hope it serves you well. 
We all deserve to have our new vehicle and it service well. No, I'm good on this. New car batteries play hide and seek. Yeah, that's the new thing nowadays. Uh, I've heard something about... Well, I think the batteries that are under the seats are the ones that are so large that uh, for the uh, EV cars... It thinks it's a truck and costs 130 to fill thing. Oh my gosh. A Santa Fe holds that much fuel, really. What is that, like 30 gallon tank, give or take? I'm staying home. <laughs> it makes you want to stay home, that's for sure. Uh, I think what you're talking about the batteries playing hide and seek or the batteries not being underneath the seat is that they are the uh, EV vehicles and their battery capacity is so large that they have to put them under the seats because there's nowhere else to put them anymore. I think they used to put them in the trunk. I'm not sure. I don't know how any of that stuff worked back in the day. I never owned one of those vehicles, so I do not know. Uh, but I believe that would be the reasoning behind uh, the batteries under the seat. Uh, though I do know that my brother had a first I wanted to use I didn't know that my brother had a uh, 300 a Chrysler 300 and all of his electronics was underneath the back seat uh, basically underneath the back dash of the vehicle and uh, when a tree fell and crushed his back window it totaled the car because all of his electrical components were ruined uh, had been inundated in water and uh, they totaled the vehicle right then and there due to the fact that the back window was broken because everything is underneath the back seat. But I think on the EV vehicles, I think that they put the batteries underneath the seats, like I said, because they're so large with great capacity, or supposed to have large capacity. And I mean, you have to have batteries like huge in order to carry all that power so that you can drive four hours down the road or whatever the heck they're supposed to be good for. Uh, that's the problem with EV still to this day is that you can't travel as far as you want to on a tank of gas uh, Or like you can with a tank of gas you pull into the service station you fill back up you keep on going down the road on an EV vehicle You run it out of power you have to stop and have to sit there and charge for hours before it's ready to go down the road again That's the EV problem that they have today So they're trying to make the batteries larger and larger to hold more capacity and of course that's why you end up putting them underneath this seats in my opinion and again it's all purely assumption because I've never owned one never will own one to the best of my knowledge uh, so yeah $130 in fuel so what is the safest car to drive I do not know that answer today Jeannie I know that my GMC is plenty safe for me uh, we'll go with that okay uh, I know back in the old days that's why I owned a Ford back then uh, the Ford Aerostar was the safest minivan on the market in that time, uh, in the 90s, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, it was the safest vehicle on the market for a family, so that's why I purchased a Ford Aerostar for my wife and kids at that time. Seriously, it's almost eight bucks a gallon in Brunswick right now. Yeah, we know, and it's only going to get higher, possibly. So, yeah. That's insane. I know, right? Uh, but I've never owned a Ford since. I've only driven them, and I don't like driving them. Uh, my old boss gave me a Nissan, a little Nissan pickup, quarter-ton pickup. Uh, I also had a Toyota T100, I think it was, uh, pickup for work. And uh, when I went to work for my brother, well, we've had nothing but Chevy, Chevy and GMCs. Uh, the safest car to drive is the safest brain driving. I love driving. Oh, uh, that's true too, uh, Freebird, that's true. Uh, the only thing is we can't control the drivers around us. So, we always, again, keep your head on a swivel kind of thing when you're driving down the road. Uh, you have to be careful with that, with other people. I'm, I'm never concerned about my driving. I'm always concerned about everybody around me. Uh, I know I drive well. I may not drive the safest, but I know I drive well. Uh, we trained in a Nissan King cab, standard transmission. Yeah, my little uh, my little quarter ton pickup was a uh, standard. I mean, it was completely standard. It didn't have a front bumper or a back bumper. Uh, crank windows, 
uh, stick shift, standard. Uh, a nice little running truck though. Got good gas mileage. I liked it. It wasn't bad. I uh, hated driving through traffic because traffic here in Northern Virginia sucks in a standard vehicle. But, you know, that's why I always try to get to work early and leave early. Uh, try to stay away from the majority of the traffic. I guess I need to go and... How long are you going to be live? I'm probably not going to be on here much longer, Brandon, because I'm going to... Well, I've got meat thawing. I'm planning on air frying some uh, uh, country-style ribs. Uh, probably make some mashed potatoes. I'm still debating on whether I'm making them fresh or uh, out of a package. I have both, or I can make both. Remember, no bumpers, I want one now. <laughs> yeah, right? No bumpers, it is crazy. I need to go and uh, turn the, uh, let my water out. Let my water out, that sounds funky. Drain tanks, that's what I'm gonna do. You can see I've got everything jerry-rigged here. What time is dinner? Uh, me, personally, I like to eat around uh, five o'clock. 5 p.m. So uh, it could be any time after that or any time within that time frame. I ate at 5 because I like to bed by 8. I want my food to settle before I go to bed. Uh, I'm still fat but mildly. Uh, not like majorly. Uh, I've been fatter. I know that. At one point I was weighing 2... 218. That was when I first injured my back, and uh, well, it was two months after I injured my back that I'd gone up to that weight. The doctor told me I needed to lose weight because that was probably creating some problems with my back, continuing to hurt. As soon as how they couldn't find anything wrong, still to this day, nothing was ever found. Well, uh, yes, my back is bad. You're looking good. Thank you for uh, the. Uh, yeah, I. I got heavy. I mean, like, fat. To me, I was fat. And, uh, it's my slide. It's my bedroom right there. Uh, then he gave me some advice. That's when I first tried the Atkins diet to, uh, lose weight quickly. Uh, lost 36 pounds in 30 days. Uh, so I dropped to 182. Uh, when I had my second neck surgery. My first neck surgery in 2010, I think it was around 188, 189. When I had my second surgery in 2015, I was down to 175, and that's kind of the weight I've been carrying around since. Uh, 175 to 180, somewhere in that range. That's still overweight for me. Uh, not by much, though. I think they say my average for my height is, should be right around 164 to 167, 169, something like that. So I'm probably about 10 pounds above that which to me is not that bad. Uh, I do have a little bit of a gut, not much. Uh, I don't think is, you guys are seeing. Uh, in my opinion, I have what I consider to be native skin. As you can see, there's no hair on these arms, guys. Uh, there's a couple of hairs on my hand right there. You might be able to see, but yeah, there's no hair on these arms. Uh, my legs have very little bit of hair, so I think I have native skin. As you can see, I can't grow facial hair a lot, uh, mostly here and on the upper lip, but really nothing down the sides, either side. Uh, and if it does grow out, I usually grow out like a bush right here. I've had that before. Uh, let it grow for three or four or five years, something like that. And it was probably, I don't know, about six inches long or so. Uh, chopped it off one day. And have been not necessarily clean shaven, but uh, shaven. To I have a lapeche. Yeah, you were saying something about that the other day. Uh, Free bird, I remember you saying something about it. Uh, yeah, I think we had a similar or a small discussion like this. But yeah, so that just kind of gives you... Oh, and you're on the res too. Okay. Hey, Araceli, how you doing? Good afternoon. Uh... What's that? What's that? Uh, born on the res or raised on the res? being Native American or native to the land. I don't consider it Native American because America wasn't here when nativity started. 
you want to look at it. Okay. But yeah, so, well, I know I need to finish picking up my tools. Uh, I got a bunch, I got a huge mess outside. Arr. Appalucci, look it up. No, no, no car trouble. I just tell you, I was doing, trying to do uh, preventive maintenance. My iPad needs reboot. My stuff is weird. Be right back. Uh, yeah, look up Alapici. You'll you'll see what it's about. But uh, yeah, so watch. I'll even pull up my pant leg here a little bit and let you guys see. So here you are. See no hair. Hold on. I'm pull it up a little bit better. Yeah, see, no hair on my legs either. <laughs> you know, there's a hair here and there, but there's a couple of hairs here and there. But yeah, the, man, I don't know what the heck's been biting me, but something bit me and it itches like crazy constantly and I'm not a scratch kind of guy. Something bites and it normally doesn't itch, but this, for some reason, has continued to itch. Don't know what the heck it was that bit me. But something took advantage of me. I had a bite on my neck, there for, or right underneath my chin there for a while. Man, that thing itched for over a week. And normally, if I get like a mosquito bite or anything like that, it, I don't scratch. And it normally goes away after a couple of days. Here it was a week later, and I was still scratching. I was wondering what it was that had bit me or what it was that had gotten a hold of me there. And then I ended up with them on my legs. So I'm thinking it may have been whenever I went out hiking somewhere. Uh, just something got on me, I don't know. And I didn't know what it was. But yeah, normally I don't, I don't have, if I get bit by something, uh, normally might itch for a day or two if they're the itchy type, like a mosquito. Uh, but I just don't scratch and it normally goes away after a day or two, so. Uh, but that one on my neck, it continued on for days. Uh, it was over a week, like 10 days, I think, 9, 10 days. Uh, baffled me. But, uh, so yeah, I'm going to make country-style ribs in the air fryer. I'm going to make mashed potatoes. And, of course, I have corn, green beans, or sweet peas for a vegetable if I choose. Uh, I normally go with sweet peas with my country-style ribs and mashed potatoes. Anybody else as a kid mix their mashed potatoes in their corn or peas? Uh, not necessarily with green beans, but corn and peas for sure. I know I always did as a kid. It was always fun. Vampires got you. Yeah, something got me. Yankee Indian ancestry. Uh, I don't know exactly what my ancestry is, uh, but it is native. No, I know what, what it means. Good idea. He asked, what's that? Oh, I'll look it up. Me saying because of the Yankee Indian Ancestry and vampires, I can't go outside with a flashlight now. Too buggy. I had that same last two years with itching. Yeah, there's something out here. Was in Pete Watkinagan. Golden Lake on Friday. It was $1.75 a bargain compared to anywhere else. Yeah, but $1.75 a liter. Clarify, Ebre, that way people don't start freaking out. $1.75 a gallon is, would be insane right now. Coming over for dinner. Yeah, I hear ya. Yes, peas, of course. I was two, but I have to drive two hours. Oh, it'd take you two hours to get here, Jeannie. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because you're in Southern Virginia, right? Southern Virginia area or Central? Southern? Hey, Jeannie, have you ever noticed how the uh, uh, insects affect you when you're walking across the grass? But if you're on, the, uh, if you're on a uh, porch, especially a porch off the ground, 
might say a back deck I'll say a deck otherwise because decks are normally elevated anyway off the ground and how the bugs don't bother you is bad on the deck uh, I've noticed it here in Virginia Virginia is bad about it I'm getting me a bug zapper from eBay <laughs> Well, you're down in Texas. The Texas heat normally takes care of the bugs, except for the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes can live through anything, it seems like. They're like freaking cockroaches. I say that uh, lovingly. Yeah, we'll say that. <laughs> and now I'm just kind of sitting around with you guys talking because... Yes, but we notice different kinds of bugs now. I know, right? It has, uh, things have changed with the bugs and the types. So I'm going to pick up all my tools here so that I can get them back inside. I'm trying to figure out how I want to position you guys. Okay, here we go. Now you guys can see me. Yeah, see, and this is something new. Uh, they used to not send these new clips with new brakes. We used to use the old ones, and you greased them. And you put them all back together, and everything worked out fine. And nowadays, they send you all the new uh, slide clips. If y'all could see this box, you'd see that I've had these bricks for a while. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I bought them. That could be what it is, Jenny. Uh, I'm pretty sure I bought those brakes. I want to say... <laughs> now we're making a comparison. The first week, or the first year of the pandemic. So I think I bought those in the fall of 2020 and I've had them ever since. Knowing that one day I'll need to change them, here we are a year and a half later and I'm still not having to change them. But then again, that truck hardly ever moved for nine months while I was unemployed. So there's reason behind reason. We just, you know, think about it and understand. I've got tools missing, of course. I uh, don't know where they would be. I have no idea where they would be. So, yeah. I find it strange that uh, people see me crouch down like this. And they think that it's weird that a, and I don't mean it in a bad way, that an old man like me can sit like this. I mean, it baffles me because I've always been able to. I mean, there should be no reason why not. I guess other people, other people's bodies don't work that well for them, I guess. I don't know. The older we get. And somebody was amazed that I was able to still crouch down on the ground the other day.
Normally I'd make my country style ribs on the grill. I haven't had them on the grill in forever. Because when I use a grill, I use charcoal and uh, mesquite wood chips for smoke flavor. So yeah, uh, my grill is at my son's house. I don't, I didn't bring it here, and I haven't used it over there in a, probably over a year, probably at least. stuff has places where it stores in the vehicle. I think I'm just going to throw it in the back seat. <laughs> I got too much on the back seat. So yeah, throw it there for now until I decide to put it where it belongs. Yeah, you can really see the difference in the fluid level there's a full that whole section right there but you can see that it's kind of closer to the back because the trucks kind of set down in a slant to the rear tire so it should be what do you want to see about the back seat oh uh, I think I figured out why. Yes, an air fryer is convenient. I think I figured out why uh, Mr. Lovell got laid down. Uh, when I picked up the back seat earlier, it kind of twisted a little bit. And I was under the back seat a couple of days ago. And I think that's how it got laid down. But there's the back seat look, people. I think I know the why you wanted to look back there was so that you could see the uh, level, isn't that true? Squeals come from being dusty. Uh, majority of bugs are in the soil. Not necessarily. Uh, I can show you on the clip. I knew that's what you wanted to see. <laughs> I had it figured out. Uh, I can show you on the new brakes uh, what creates a squeal. Uh, whenever you know that you might need to be putting your brakes, new brakes on. Uh, I didn't want to open the package, but I will just for you guys. So you have to see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the brake pads fit up these two clips are kind of hard to show you these two clips right here compress in like this with your brake pad sliding in on each side because this sits in the caliper and when this pushes this piece of metal up if you notice if you can see I'm gonna try to pull it out for you guys so you can see it uh, it's really hard to see I don't know if you can see a little bend right here but that little bend right there, whenever it pushes out far enough, I'm gonna I'm gonna bend this one so that you guys can see it. When you push it out far enough, here you see that little curve right here on the end? That rubs against the rotor. Squeal, squeal, squeal. That means the brake pads are really low. I can bend it back and kind of because it, it's gonna push out whenever I put new brake pads on anyway. There's a gap of metal that uh, this as as the brake pad moves back closer and closer and closer to your rotor eventually this piece will create the squeal once it touches the metal and that's what the squeal is from so it's not dust just so you know uh, the old days the older days see this is new to me uh, on these newer vehicles I'll show you here real quick on the older days 
they used to have a little tab attached to your metal of your brake pad a little tab right here attached and it stuck out this way and when the pad got low enough that this piece of metal is getting so close to your rotor that that little tab right here would squeal or would rub your rotor and cause the squeal and that's when you knew you need to do brakes uh, and nowadays they have it on the clips which is a little bit different to me but uh, it's still the same uh, reasoning behind it and how it works uh, totally understandable to me I think it's kind of cool that they put them on the clips now as opposed to on the brake pad itself uh, though it worked fine on the brake pad most often though some of them did break off uh, you'd have a squeal it would break especially in the cold weather you'd have a squeal it would break the tab would break uh, you wouldn't think about the brakes needing to be changed anymore and of course you'd ruin the rotor so maybe that's why they've changed the way that they're doing these pieces now. I don't know. I do not know. Uh, but I do see the differences. Again, a little bit of informal knowledge of uh, how long I've been changing brakes. Knowing about shoes, I can change brake shoes just as easy as I can change brake pads. But brake pads made the world a whole big different, easier way of doing things on your vehicle. So, yeah, uh, I think we'll get to the two hour mark here, which is about three minutes, two minutes away. And uh, let you guys go for the day and maybe, and let me see what kind of information I can get or what information I'm hearing in reference to what's going on with the convoy because it is on its, it is on its way back. It will be in Burbank, Ohio today at some point. I don't think it's arrived yet. It is three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I don't think that uh, the convoy has arrived in Burbank yet. Uh, somebody, if you want, correct me if I'm wrong. And, uh, yeah. A lightning boat just knocked me offline and think back. Wow. You getting bad weather up there, Avery? It's only when you first... <laughs> Uh, hey from UK. Hey Aaron, how you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for being here My pad set would not fit that Squealer on the vibrating clips had to chop them off uh, Some people do take them off. I don't I, I consider it bad practice, but some people do and uh, You know, it's totally up to the person that owns the vehicle especially if they do their own maintenance and or work Is that when you turn the rotors? Uh, if you turn the rotors only Necessarily only if you uh, score the rotor with the uh, metal to metal uh, score like uh, Definitely uh, the ones on Charlotte's vehicle needed to be turned they were gouged uh, They needed to be turned, but they may have been so gouged that turning would Deplete the amount of metal that the rotor would still have and if it gets too skinny It's not advisable to continue so you would buy a new rotor that had full capacity So yeah, that's when you would turn a rudder. They should be there. They left at five. They left at five this morning. I didn't think they left that early, but maybe they did. But nevertheless, uh, they were supposed to have a rally this afternoon. I heard it was canceled. You guys were telling me I'd heard it from a different location as well, other locations. And uh, that I heard there was two rallies that I heard, but if anything was going to be after 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I wasn't going to be able to be there. So there was no reason me driving 6 hours out to turn around and drive back for no, without seeing anybody. So, wherever they go from Ohio at this point, from Burbank. With it being 6 hours, they'll probably do a 3 hour trip. Which would probably put them in the Pennsylvania area. Uh, possibly. Or maybe they'll come all the way into West Virginia tomorrow. I doubt it. Or are they staying there over the week? Or are they staying there two days? Are they, uh, I, th I think they just stayed two days in Indiana, did they not? I might be mistaken about that. But uh, not many shops turn anymore. Cheaper to go new, I guess, in most cases. Yeah, because it's all Chinese made. So they're not going to last to begin with, in my opinion. So they're going to be two days in Burbank. 
Okay, so that must be why they're doing rallies probably tomorrow as opposed to today. Or maybe they're doing them tonight and they'll not have to worry about going to bed early so they can stay up all night with the rally. Uh, stay up as late as they want with the rally and not have to worry about getting up first thing in the morning to drive again. So that might be why they're staying there for two days. Uh, meaning today and tomorrow so they will be leaving there to, uh, Tuesday morning and headed this direction. So they're to arrive at 6 o'clock this evening or they're to have a rally at 6 o'clock this evening? Do you know, Jeannie? I do not know. Uh, like I said, I've been following, but I'm not I'm not staying. They're still far enough away that I don't have to concern myself about trying to get near to them. So they're going to have a rally tonight at 6 o'clock. And see, if I had stayed there, that would last an hour. That would put it at 7. That would be me arriving here at my place at 1 o'clock in the morning to turn around and get up at 4 to go to work at 5. No, not happening. I thought again, I thought better against it. But I'll see them here soon enough. Uh, whoever's still with the convoy that I knew from times past. Uh, yeah, and sometimes those don't go as well as planned. So anything's possible. But so I'm over the two hour mark, guys. And I think I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. It's after three o'clock here. Uh... I think I just had a couple of videos pop up on my uh, YouTube to go watch. So I'm probably going to do that. And Brandon's Recovery TV. Again, another shout out to Brandon's Recovery, Recovery TV. Guys, go over there. Head over there. Go give him some uh, uh, love. Watch some of his uh, videos. And uh, get him to watch hours that he needs, which is 4,000. And he's at 34. So he needed approximately... Uh, 560 558 uh, watching hours from you guys or from us uh, so uh, yeah go over there and give him some love and, and get his watch hours his uh, watch time up better off get a fresh start to your week I know uh, I know Ebre that's why I made the decision uh, when and as quickly as I did uh, because as of 9.30 last evening, I was still ready to get on the road. And then I found out, uh, got some information and uh, changed my mind, figured I'd go ahead and do the brakes today. I'd go ahead and bring you guys on. Well, actually, I was wanting to do the brakes yesterday, but it rained. Uh, was gonna, was planning on doing them this morning because I made the decision not to go. And uh, they were calling for rain. I think we got a little bit of sprinkles this morning. Uh, it stopped. I looked at the weather. It showed that I had like two, three hours of clear weather, and it was supposed to start raining. It never did. Uh, here we are. That was at nine. It showed weather at two. Here we are an hour later, and uh, still no rain. Blue, beautiful blue skies, and uh, big fluff, fluffy uh, clouds. Of course, that's my flag. Big fluffy clouds, beautiful blue, nice green trees. Yeah, so uh, it's a beautiful day out here, actually. In the, uh, you guys asked me what was the temp. Let's see what my truck tells me. Eighty-one degrees. Yeah, so I told you I'll just uh, hit my brakes, brake pedal, and the caliper would re would arrive back to uh, its position on that brake that I loosened it on. Yeah, see my brake pedal. It goes down far, but that's because my brake pads are low. If I added brake fluid to it, it wouldn't do that. I don't want to add brake fluid to it because I know what it does and I know it's not hurting it being quote unquote a little low right now. So yeah. Uh, I got my Dallas Cowboy shirt on of course. Ha ha. Number 22, Mr. Emmett Smith. Uh, the goat. The goat of running backs. So anyway. Y'all have a good rest of the afternoon. And uh, I'll see you on the next go around. And 
yeah happy Sunday to everybody I hope you had a wonderful weekend off as we prepare to go back to work tomorrow and uh, yeah do it all over again and there's the level everybody uh, so y'all take care and uh, we'll see you on the next one I was just gonna say I may have made the no before maybe <laughs> Uh, I know what you're talking about, Avery. It's all right. All right, have a good week. Yeah, you guys have a good week. We'll see you all. Thank you for being here, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.